All right, guys, so in this video, I'm breaking down APRV in comparison to buy level so that you know exactly what the difference is, exactly what the uh, setting differences are, and then what, what are your goals when you're using either of these modes of mechanical ventilation. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if somebody tells you they're the same thing, they're not, okay? Now, if somebody tells you you can set APRV up on the Avia to do buy level like on the 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 Hamilton 840 then you can so can you make these modes in the different ventilators that they are on can you make them look like the other mode can you make APRV look like buy level absolutely can you make buy level look like APRV yes okay why are they called something different it's called laws people okay Siemens um not Siemens uh Viasis the Avia ventilator uh, if I'm if if I'm understanding this correctly, uh, earn the patent on APRV, and so APRV name and identical uh, operation can't be used right now. So the the 840 said, well, we can make a mode called bi level, and essentially do the same thing, but not do it the same thing, achieve it another way. Okay, and so that's my understanding of the background of why the settings are just slightly different. But when you understand what these modes do, then you understand that you can use either of these modes to achieve the same purpose. Okay, um, so let's first of all talk about when would you use APRV or bi level. For the most part, these are pressure. Uh, control modes of mechanical ventilation. Okay, both of them offer baseline pressures at an increased level and then at a decreased level, and the patient is allowed to breathe during both phases of the breath. So the inspiratory phase and the expiratory phase of the breath. So much to the point that they don't even call them inspiratory time and expiratory time. They call them time high and time low. Okay, so they don't even, the inspiratory and expiratory phase in terminology kind of goes out the window when you're talking about these modes because really what they are are varying CPAPs where the patient can breathe on top of the high pressure and they can breathe on top of the low pressure. So I'm going to draw a pressure waveform for you here. Traditionally, the way these modes are used, APRV looks something like this. This is a pressure waveform. So pressure goes up, it holds, it drops down. It comes right back up and holds and will repeat. Okay, this right here is the airway pressure release ventilation. Okay, that's what that drop is in the pressure waveform. When you see it, you'll see it drop there. And I'm going to come back to this and talk about settings here in just a second. With bi level, you typically see it looking something more like this. Okay, and you know what? I drew this at baseline. I'm gonna I'm gonna fix that a little bit because it typically more looks more like this. Where you have a peep set, okay, and you go from pressure high, you drop the pressure low, up the pressure high, and drop the pressure low. Okay, so they look they look different. They don't look these two things don't look the same, right? This is traditional by level versus APRV. Okay, now the purpose in both of these modes is to increase mean airway pressure. In doing so, you should recruit more functional alveoli through the pores of cone and the canals of Lambert and ultimately increase FRC. If you increase FRC, then you increase oxygenation and your patient gets better. Your PF ratio will improve. You should be able to achieve acceptable oxygenation levels with lower FiO2s, okay? Instead of having somebody on, you know, volume control with a PEEP of eight and 70 or 80%, which I see, all right? And, and I'm sure you see it too. Um, now we're taking our mean airway pressure up here and increasing it dramatically and what we see is now we can drop our FiO2s down to 40 or 50% and achieve the same 
oxygenation when we look at our PaO2s, which means our PF ratio is better in these modes as opposed to a conventional mode of mechanical ventilation. Okay, now, how do we, how do we set these things up? Okay, so remember I told you this is the Avia, this is the uh, 840, they actually have a new one out, the 960. I'm sure the mode will be on the 960 as well, and will probably operate similar. Okay, so here's how you set these um, modes up and what is actually set on the machine. Okay, when you look at the Avia and you're dialing an APRV, you will set a pressure high and a pressure low. And then you will tell the machine how long to hold that pressure high. So you'll set a time high and you will set a time low. Okay. Now you obviously also have sensitivity and FiO2, but those aren't functional components of the way the mode works. These are the only four settings that you set in APRV. Notice there's no respiratory rate. Okay. There's no respiratory rate because the patient is allowed to breathe spontaneously on top of both of these. If that's long enough to get a breath, then fine. If not, then they're breathing on spontaneously on top of pressure high. Okay? So, these are your four settings. Now, we didn't set a respiratory rate, but if we set a time high here at, let's say this is seven seconds. Okay? and we set a time low here at one second, then if we're here for seven and here for one, then that's eight seconds, right? 60 divided by eight would be somewhere in the ballpark of what? Seven and a half seconds? I mean, seven and a half breaths per minute. That means you would get seven, seven and a half of these time highs and time lows at this pressure high at this pressure low you would get that happening seven and a half times every minute so your rate is about seven and a half okay i know it doesn't make sense when you throw a half in there but that's truly what it is okay now when you come over here to buy level you're going to set a peep high now notice how they call it peep instead of pressure Okay, the 840 calls it peep high, and they call it peep low. Okay, and then they have a time high, and then they have a respiratory rate. Okay, now this looks slightly different, right? So pressure high, okay, I'm with you here. Pressure high, peep high. Sounds like the same, yep, it is. Pressure low, peep low. Sounds the same. It is. They, they call them peep. They call them pressure, but it doesn't matter. Both of them allow for spontaneous breathing to happen throughout the pressures high and the pressures low. So it doesn't matter if you call it pressure high, pressure low, peep high, peep low. It doesn't matter. The patient's breathing at the high pressure and the low pressure, the high peep and the low peep. Okay. They set a time high, which tells how long this holds. Okay. So from there to there, let's say we have it on um, one and a half seconds. Okay, because you typically hold them longer in bi-level. You're looking for an IDE ratio, either inverse or uh, one to one, sometimes two to one. Uh, just depends on your patient and their presentation and how they're tolerating it. And then you set a respiratory rate. So if you set a respiratory rate, let's say of, of let's say 10 breaths per minute, okay? then that is what establishes your time low in conjunction with your time high. Because if you set a respiratory rate of 10 breaths per minute, then that means there's going to be 10, 60 seconds divided by 10 breaths per minute is 6 seconds for each breath. If 1.5 seconds is up here, then 3.5 seconds is spent down here. Okay? Now, of course, that's not the one-to-one -one that I just mentioned to you because I did this off the top of my head and I didn't get my numbers right, right? But if six seconds is our total cycle time, you could extend the I time here, the time high, to three seconds. 
and that would drop this down to three seconds. I actually think the other one was actually four and a half seconds. But anyways, now we're at a three seconds at the peep high, and we're at three seconds at peep low, and now we have a one to one ratio as far as inspiratory phase versus expiratory phase. Okay, now the big question is, is how do I make these modes look like each other, Joe? You said you could use either, they're not the same, but they can be created to create a bi-level, APRV can be manipulated to create a bi-level type setting, right? Well, it's very simple. If you understand your mechanics and your I times and your E times, then all you do is make your P high and your P high match, your P low and your P, your pressure low and your peep low match. You come in here to T high and you put three seconds. For T low, you put three seconds and it's gonna look just like that. And now you've turned APRV more into bi-level, okay? If you wanna turn bi-level into APRV, then you simply come and match your peep high and your peep low. Now what's interesting about the 840 is you can go in and lock your time high or you can lock your time low. I recommend you playing with this to figure out how to do this because if you haven't already been asked to do this, you're probably going to. But change this T, T high to T low and set it on, let's just say one second, just to keep the math simple, okay? Now you've set your time low, okay? Now, if we put our rate on 10 breaths per minute, Okay, then our total cycle time is six seconds, and we're spending one second at time low, then that means we're going to spend five seconds at time high, and it's going to look like APRV. It's going to function the exact same way. Your patient breathes at both pressures, peep high, peep low, pressure high, pressure low, and they'll get that one second drop for the expiratory time, for the time low, okay? And right back up to the pressure high, okay? That's how you compare APRV to bi-level, the differences between them. They both are good modes of mechanical ventilation to achieve better oxygenation for your patient. I will give you this side note, okay? Lots of rave right now about APRV and you know, in the, in, the, in the studies and stuff, it has not been proven to um, reduce mortality in ARDS. So while it is extremely helpful, and while it does improve oxygenation status, and I've seen lots of good outcomes with it, studies show that it's not any more beneficial than the ARDSNET protocol going with high peeps, low tidal volumes, and high rates in terms of mortality. Okay, these are great questions, guys. Keep bringing them. Ask them. Please subscribe, comment, like if you will. I appreciate it. I'll respond to you always and get back with you. Best of wishes.